bells of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol. Fa la 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 la. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope that I can answer some questions, especially when it comes to orchids that shouldn't bloom. Should they bloom? They want to bloom. Should we let them bloom? And how do we make that calculated decision that they are going to bloom without declining? Obviously, Growing orchids in our hobby is because of the blooms. There are many other factors that attract us, but when it comes to the blooms, that is what we grow them for. We look forward to the blooms. And then you have an orchid, for example, as in my case here, my Catlianthe White Bridal Snow White. And she was a wish list orchid. For four years, I was looking for this orchid. And lo and behold, earlier in the season, I found her across the border in Portugal, thanks to Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, who sent me a link for a Portuguese orchid nursery, and I couldn't believe my eyes. And that is where the decision-making process comes in. You've been waiting so long for an orchid, you finally have the orchid, you've been excited to experience the blooms for yourself after all these years of seeing this orchid online, and suddenly she is about to bloom, and on top of that, unexpectedly. And then you're caught between a rock and a hard place because you're thinking, I really shouldn't let this orchid bloom. It's far too soon. Should I or shouldn't I? So I'm hoping this video will help you make a calculated decision whether you should let your orchid bloom or not, what to look out for so that either you can enjoy the blooms and the orchid is safe, or I'm sorry to say that spike needs to come off to preserve the health of the orchid. And I'm listing all these factors because for me, this is a dire case of desperation. I want to see the blooms on this white bridal, having waited so, so long. And that is why we're also not outside filming, because one of the factors is location. Keep the orchid safe. But first of all, let me point out the main, main observation you need to make if you're going to choose to let your orchid bloom even though she's new to the collection and as in this case she had a major back part removed from her acclimating repotting in new media many factors where i'm thinking this should not be happening but here we are i've got buds coming so i have been watching this orchid since i have divided her since i potted her up into leca and self-watering because of the new media and it is also transition and acclimating process. Many, many factors here. But the main thing I'm watching for is all the pseudobulbs in the back. What are they looking like compared to how they looked when I did the whole division and cleaning up process? Now, I've been watching these pseudobulbs while the roots were growing and the new growth was forming which as you can see is also only halfway to its supposed potential. When I saw the buds coming, I'm like, oh no, don't do this to me. Make my life easier. Please don't try to bloom. It'll take away all the responsibility I need to be considering from here on in for your continued health. So I'm going to try and find the footage of when I divided her so that we can compare the pseudobulbs at that point in time with what we're seeing here today. Because in my judgment, I am watching those pseudobulbs if they are desiccating, if they are beyond the point of no return with regards to energy reserves. And that is one of the points where I'm considering very strongly whether I'm going to let this orchid bloom out or not. The pseudobulbs tell a story. So while this growth was growing, including its new roots, there's a lot of energy already consumed 
Now we've got buds forming and the blooms are gonna take even more energy. So I'm watching carefully of the pseudobulbs, which is something I highly recommend if you ever find yourself in this conundrum as well. It is also super important when it comes to the pseudobulbs that you make a calculated decision. How many pseudobulbs storage organs do you have to support the blooming? So here you can see that I have four old ones supporting the new growth, the new roots, and the hopeful blooming. That is really important. And let me just tell you that this is a hybrid. When it comes to species, it's a different ball game altogether. If you find yourself in a situation that you have a new orchid and you're going through the same process, and then you have to make a decision, is it okay to let her bloom out? Or am I gonna risk the overall survival of the orchid if I let it bloom out? A species is a lot different to a hybrid. Hybrids are much, much more forgiving. So please remember what orchid you are dealing with. Look at the size of your pseudobulbs. How many structures have you got in the back to back up the energy requirements for the blooming and also the time of year because if your orchid isn't acclimated, if it's just new in your collection, you will also know that it could possibly be out of season and then maybe it's better you cut that spike off. So species versus hybrid, different behavior altogether. Species are much more finicky and also are less forgiving than hybrids. So keep that in mind. Greetings from Siliano. <laughs> If your pseudobulbs look like there is plenty of energy left in them and you have new roots in the pot, your old roots do not look like they are declining, then it is okay to keep going and letting those buds develop. Root growth, of course, is fundamental and is priority. So we have good roots in the pot still the old roots have not declined i cannot see the equivalent of the old roots looking as if they have failed in the pot and 80 percent of my new roots have gone down into the media and then there's one root that sort of said okay <clears throat> I'm gonna stop growing. Two reasons could be possible. Not enough humidity around the surface of my pot, and that's why it stopped growing. The other reason being, the orchid is now focusing on the buds and subsequent blooms. So the root production has taken place, the orchid feels comfortable in adverted commas, and that's why the roots have stopped growing. Now, obviously, because I don't have a clear pot, I can't tell you what is inside the pot, but just the one root on the outside there tells me that at least that one has stopped growing. And I have to assume the same thing is happening in the pot because now it's focusing all its energy into the buds and subsequent blooming. Healthy root system provides energy, nutrition, hydration for those blooms to develop. And if you have that, no matter the stage of your orchid, division, new import, etc. Roots will also tell you whether it is okay to keep going and let the orchid do what it wants to do and bloom regardless of how long you've had it, regardless of any acclimating processes that might still not have been complete. If you see roots in the pot behaving and acting healthily, keep the process going. No need to take off that spike. Given that I just gave you the history and I wouldn't call it desperation, more like anticipation and eagerness to see my Catliantha white bridal blooms. Finally, if you find yourself in a similar situation like I find myself right now, also be aware that do not move the location of the orchid. You can see we're indoors here for a reason. She has a lot of light coming from this side of the pot and the only time I move her is to give her the occasional flush but I do flush her even in this area just off to the left onto the terrace and I put her back. Any kind of change of location of an orchid in this situation that you do want to bloom out, your pseudobulbs are looking like they're going to be able to handle it, your roots are okay in the pot. An added stress factor would be to change her location and you don't want to add that stress factor at all and then possibly risk bud blast. The buds may still blast even if you've taken all the pointers I've just mentioned into consideration. The buds may still blast because of the energy consumption that is required to get to this stage. She is just doing what she thinks she should do 
but there's not enough energy to go the full distance. So that would not be a mistake on your part, but at least you know she's trying and then happy days for the next growth because by that time, all these what ifs are out the window and you can just let her bloom. But if you want to let her bloom like what I'm doing here in my situation, I am hardly moving her at all and I'm still getting a little bit of bud blast which is to be expected. Eventually, even a cluster of blooms may only produce one bloom, and that will tell you also, is the orchid strong enough to hold that bloom over the extended period of time, or should you enjoy the blooms, take a picture, record the fragrance, and then remove the bloom prematurely. Do not let it mature and bloom out, especially with cluster bloomers, you will be able to see that maybe you have five buds and you end up with two because of the bud blast. That is another indicator that you need to take into consideration when it then comes time to cut the spike off prematurely so that the health and the strength of the orchid is not depleted because we want to enjoy the blooms for three or four weeks. So while all this is going on, always know that you may need to intervene and you won't see the blooms on the orchid that you're so desperate to see the blooms on. Keep watching the pseudobulbs. Keep watching how the roots are behaving. If you have a transparent pot, even better. Well, in my case, I can sort of gauge what I see at the surface. Keep watching the buds. The minute you see bud blast, no need to panic. As long as the other factors are still okay and stable, let the orchid do what it wants to do. Do not move from the location as much as possible to avoid any additional stress. And then if all these factors remain stable and then she blooms out, whether she blooms out with a full cluster as per her buds or just a partial blooming, know that possibly the partial blooming is your biggest indicator to say, all right, thank you, happy days, and you enjoyed the blooms, but then cut off that spike prematurely. If you haven't moved her excessively from the location that she's normally at and you still get bud blast, that is your indicator there is too much energy being exerted to complete the blooming to its full potential. And it's at that point you know exactly to just cut that spike off prematurely, but happy days for the next growth. So I'm hoping that that was helpful. Also to explain my decision-making process with regards to my Catliantha White Bridal. If I were to lose any pseudobulbs in the back, trust me, everything I've mentioned today, I would not let this orchid bloom out. I would be able to quite comfortably, although a shame, but nip the spike off right at the base and then that's it. Considering I have positive results so far with all the pointers I mentioned, my pseudobulbs aren't too desiccated, my roots are 80% in the pot, the new ones. I am not moving her from her location too much, and I've only so far seen one bud blast. I'm just gonna let her do what she wants to do, and maybe if I get one bloom out of her, then we'll look at her again, but that bloom is coming off prematurely. If you have any questions with regards to a specific example in your collection that you are not sure about, use the comments below. Let me know your circumstances and how long you've had the orchid. Any information you can give to me, that would be awesome. And then we can discuss on an individual basis whether you should go ahead and let it bloom out or if, for example, yeah, I'm gonna tell you what you don't want to hear, that that spike needs to come off. Anyway, either way, hope this was helpful. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Please have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.